So hello, we share solution areas. I know that right now you're learning some of the terrible challenges of scarcity that your peers in other parts of the world face every day, including not having enough light to learn and study. That knowledge can be kind of overwhelming. And so it might be hard for you to imagine when I tell you that these young people live in communities filled with abundance, filled with possibility and opportunity. You're probably thinking to yourself, wow, this guy's a little out of touch. But after 25 years of working around the world in places where people do dreadful things to each other, I do know something about this. My organization, Alight, works in some of the world's toughest places. On the front line of human need, uh, providing life-saving health care and clean water to families in Somalia, to Congo, Syria and Darfur, among many others. I don't know how this sounds to you. The truth is, um, they're oftentimes places of pain and suffering. But I can also tell you that they are places of beauty, kindness, and laughter. So I wanted to offer you something, something that I've learned through the years. Sometimes in these very places of dark, uh, darkness and suffering, it helps me make sense of the world that we're in. I believe that what unites us is far greater than that that divides us. We are united by our shared humanity, and, and the things that divide us distance, beliefs, politics, nationality, they all fall away in comparison to this. So what does it mean to have shared humanity? What does it mean actually to be human? So I went to traditional storytellers. I went to shamans. I went to traditional healers, people that deal with the, the sort of underpinnings or the foundations of the human experience. I connected with storytellers in Brazil. I, I connected uh, with um, people in Guatemala, in India, actually down in Oklahoma, people across the world, and a shaman in West Africa. And then I asked each one of them a simple question. What is it to be human? What followed was a process of listening and learning and distilling until finally the shaman from West Africa said there are two things that are at the root of the human experience. And he told me. And the answer resonated very deeply with me and I went and shared it with everybody else that I'd been talking to and it resonated with them. So I'd like to share it with you. First, being a human is being wondrous. We all understand this in different ways. For some people, this means having a soul, for others an eternal spirit, or to be made of the atoms of stars. We each describe it in different ways. But I think we understand the wonder of being a human. Only a few decades ago, 6,000 languages were in existence around the world. 6,000 different ways of seeing the world and explaining it. It's the myths and the stories of a thousand cultures passed down through generations. It's the host of soft words that a mother uses to comfort her scared child. I think of our amazing desire to be better and to reach higher. The epic struggle to put a person on the moon and the fact that when that day arrived, the whole world watched, eyes raised in amazement and pride. Not American pride, but the pride of humankind, our great leap forward. So to be human is to be wondrous. The second thing at the root of human existence. Each person comes into the world with a gift, something unique to offer the world and their community. Any village, neighborhood or community is made up of a group of people who each contribute what they have for the well-being of the whole. The community to thrive actually must see these gifts and allow that person to give them. And as all of these people share these gifts, the whole village, the whole community thrives. But here's a key thing. It's actually in the giving of the gift that the person themselves becomes whole. There's a tribe in the Philippines that calls this becoming fully human. We have each come on a long journey, perhaps a thousand different lifetimes, to be here in the world now. And if this gift is not seen, if we are shunned, pushed away, not allowed to give our gift, then actually what we're being robbed of is the essence of our humanity and the chance to actually become fully human. So what are the two things? First, that being a human is a wondrous thing. 
Second, being a human means having a gift. But more than that, it is in the giving of the gift that the village and the person actually become whole. So what does this tell me about the work that a light does and other humanitarians? And what does it also say about the things that happen in places like Congo and Syria and Somalia? Well, I see in it both terrible tragedy and great opportunity. So what, why terrible tragedy? I have walked through burned villages, made silent, emptied of life. I once sat with mothers of sick children in a camp in Sierra Leone, only to return the next day to find the mothers alone. Just one day too late. So what is it to be a refugee? It's to be denied your home, your field, your place in the world. And then to be put in camps on barren hills or fields and left forgotten or worse, seen as a problem that requires a durable solution or as a, some sort of plague that needs a wall to shut it out. What if I'd come on a long journey bearing a gift and yet when I arrived, I am scorned and my chance to give it is robbed from me. Yet there's a great opportunity. Working in the humanitarian field for so long, I know that while we work in what many would consider the most dire situations in the world, we never work alone. The refugees with whom we work are wondrous human beings. Mothers and fathers who fight for their children. Communities struggling to return to their homes. People rebuild with what they have. They stand up. They create a new future. They simply ask that we join with them. And just to remember that they're wondrous human beings, just like we are. And I know for a fact that a vast river of goodwill exists in the world and that people do want to contribute and make a difference. All of you building the solar suitcases that will change the future of so many young people, you're proof of it. Albert Schweitzer says, just as the rivers that we can see are much less numerous than the underground streams, so the idealism that is visible is minor compared to what men and women and young people hold in their hearts unreleased or scarcely released. I know this to be true. Even after witnessing some of the worst things that people do to each other, the greatest thing that I've learned is that our power to do good far outweighs the bad that exists in the world. It's the small things that divide us. Yes, we walk in many different shoes, but the thing that unites us, that's the highest thing. We are all human beings, and deep down we know that humans are wondrous things. So, we share solar solutionaries. As you spend the next several weeks exploring and taking action to help other young people a whole world away, I wanna challenge you to engage in the greatest action Believe that the world is remarkable, that it's actually abundant, and that if you engage with the world, participate, choose to give of yourself, the world will get better. Mm -hmm.